vehicle prices went crazy in the supply chain disruptions and the worker shortages during COVID. And automakers have tried hard to hold on to those very high prices that new vehicles ran up to. Prior to COVID, the average cost of a new vehicle and different organizations have different measurements of it, but the average price of a new vehicle, if you go back to early 20, was right about 36 to 39,000, depending again on how it was measured. Well, with the supply chain disruptions and all that, manufacturers started sending to dealers only higher-end vehicles with all kinds of options and higher-end stuff on them to drive up the average price of a vehicle. And so the average price of a new vehicle has been averaging somewhere around 48000 more or less, again, depending how on industry measures it. At the same time, the number of vehicles unsold in the dealer manufacturer pipeline pipeline is now somewhere around 2 million vehicles. What's been going on is the manufacturers got addicted and the dealers got addicted to being able to sell whatever with whatever options they had on it at whatever price they demanded from the buyer and people were like well i don't have any other choice i guess i'll have to buy this you know somebody who maybe their car was totaled in an accident or whatever the circumstance people were just putting up with it and paying phony dealer add-ons and buying these option related things so now you go by dealer lots that if you go back not that long ago in the Wayback Machine, the dealer lots were empty. They had no inventory. You go by dealer lots now, and except for Honda and Toyota dealers, there's inventory piling up, both now on the new vehicle side and the used vehicle side. Used vehicle prices are going down. I shared that with you recently on the podcast. New vehicles, we've got this disconnect. And what does the marketplace force? What's happening now is large numbers of vehicles are now being discounted at the dealers, where before the dealers were adding on junk fee after junk fee after junk fee after junk fee, Now, they're having to discount like the old days. Manufacturers having to have manufacturer to dealer incentives to fund some of that discounting. But the other shoe has not dropped yet, and it's going to. I can see it in my Clark crystal ball. Sometimes that crystal ball is really cloudy. This time, it's clear as could be. The manufacturer's ultimately are going to have to serve the market with what the market is demanding. And the market is demanding lower cost vehicles. The vehicles are not going to be take it or leave it. You're going to see as the months go on, more affordable versions of vehicles and more affordable vehicles on dealer lots. You know where we've seen it too? Electric vehicles. A lot of the manufacturers came out with electric vehicles that they optioned up and priced at huge markups from the gas equivalent of that vehicle because many of the traditional automakers have taken traditional gas engine vehicles and just put a different power plant in them and then marked them up ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 more because it's an EV instead of a gas engine. And what's the marketplace saying? Get lost. Electric vehicles that are reasonably priced are selling like mad. Electric vehicles that are overpriced or underperformed are sitting there. 
Uh, by the way, the sweet spot in the electric vehicle market, particularly if you need a commuter vehicle rather than an over-the-road vehicle, used electric vehicles are a steal. They cost like nothing to run. And as used vehicles, they're not holding value for the older versions, older technology, older generation of electric. Um, the Ford F-150 Lightning that had price increase after price increase after price increase for the electric version of the F-150, uh, Ford pickup truck buyers, the F-150 buyers who had considered electric said, forget you, what are you doing, Ford? Making that electric vehicle cost what a condo costs. So now Ford has cut the price of the F-150 Lightning as much as ten grand. Responding to the marketplace. So, in summary, the new vehicle market is rationalizing and normalizing. But it's a process. It's a trend line. It's not where it's going to be. So, if you have a vehicle that's working okay and you can stall on replacing it, be on buyer's strike till the automakers and the dealers wise up. And as I shared uh, the other day in answer to a question, shopping the country for a model you want instead of just local is key to saving money. And you decide your pain point. Is it a 500-mile radius of where you live? Is it 1,000 miles? Is it 2,000 miles? For most people, it's 500 miles is their pain point radius. But when you widen your search for a particular make and model and you're willing to go outside local market, the difference in savings is thousands of dollars potentially, easily thousands of dollars. And one-way airline tickets are cheap enough. You can go see America, fly somewhere to where that vehicle is, buy it, bring it back. Or train or bus train or bus you can take a train or a bus to fly to where the plane where the car is to get to where the car is yeah you could you were just telling this way, me about this way how you bus don't, travel is right so- this way we don't have to have the clark stinks about why i only talked about an airplane to go get a car thank you very much you're welcome <laughs>